Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about Penance by Eliza Clark. This is Eliza Clark's second novel, although it's my first time reading her work, but I have heard very, very good things about her debut novel, Boy Parts. Penance blurs the lines between fact and fiction. We have a book within a book thing going on here because within this novel that Eliza Clark is reading, we are in fact reading a true crime novel that was taken off of the shelves due to many inaccuracies. So from the very start of this novel, we are unsure what to trust within this true crime novel. The novel revolves around the brutal murder, and I mean a horrific murder, of a North Yorkshire teenager called Joan Wilson. She was murdered by three of her classmates. It's a crime that failed to garner any major media attention because it happened during the frenzy of Brexit. The novel is very playful in the way that it's presented. We have like podcast manuscripts, interviews, and even posts from Tumblr. We follow journalist Alec Z. Corelli as we follow events leading up to the murder. The novel is exploring themes of revenge, bullying, and the fascination with the occult. The novel's setting, a fictional town called Crow-on-Sea, feels eerily realistic. Now, I live in a small seaside town, and I can tell you that Eliza Clark has got the details and the feel of a seaside town bang on. This novel spends a lot of time on the details. We spend a lot of time finding out about Crow on Sea, its history, its successes, its failures, how the train line was taken away and then tourism fell down. We also spend pretty much the entirety of the book on the three classmates who murdered Joan Wilson. I mean, it is a deep dive on these three girls. All the idiosyncrasies that made up their friendships and their rivalries, everything is laid bare. The novel is forcing the reader to reflect on society's strange obsession with true crime, with the dark and the macabre. It's questioning and blurring the lines between empathy and just plain voyeurism. The novel really leans in to this blurring of reality and how different perceptions permeate the narrative at play. It's challenging readers to confront our own complicity when it comes to true crime stories. One of the novel's successes is its ability to make you stop and really think about why. Why are we so obsessed with these dark and horrific true crime stories? Making a murder, for instance, seemed to fuel this kind of renaissance of all these true crime stories, and we kept lapping them up. And the more we lap them up, the more they are mass-produced, and the more damaging that possibly is for everybody who was actually involved. These are real people, real lives, and even though consent is probably, maybe, given, uh, we can question how these stories are being told and presented to us. So what did I like, and what didn't I like? What I liked... I really like the playful structure. It's not exactly new. It's not doing anything original in that sense. But I did think that the way it was laid out, the way it was presented to the reader, really worked for the story it was trying to tell. One of my favourite aspects of this novel is the fictionalisation of Crow on Sea. I thought Eliza Clark did a very good job. I liked how much detail it went into, into the history of Crow on Sea. In fact, it's the detail of the town and how well brought to life it was that kept me reading. Uh, yeah, Eliza Clark's just done a very good job. I think all of the little nods to kind of like historical changes and things that can shift within a small seaside town, how reliant they are on tourism and how things like taking away the train line, which actually happened in the seaside town I live in, can really damage tourism. Yeah, I thought Eliza Clark got this aspect bang on. And the final thing I really liked about this novel is that I think it is successful in what it is trying to do, what its aims are. It is trying to force the reader to really think about our obsession or society's obsession with true crime. And I think it was. I finished the novel and it made me really think about why do we consume so much true crime and it made me really think about how much can we trust the true crime that we're watching and how damaging it is for the people it might be manipulating or mispresenting within what it's showing us. And I think, yeah, I think that's a really good thing. I think this novel sets out to do that and it does it. What didn't I like? Okay, there's one big thing, but it is quite a big thing that I just didn't vibe with when it came to this novel. And I think it will be different for different readers. I think what I'm about to mention is something I really, really didn't like. Some readers are going to say that was their favourite aspect of it. So I think it is just purely, as it always is with writing, because it's subjective. But yeah, I think it is purely just a taste thing when it comes down to my big dislike. I just found the depiction of the three classmates who murdered Joan Wilson to just be really, really cliche, but in an incredibly detailed way. I want you to picture a typical teenage girl right now, as stereotypical as you can imagine. Uh, what they might do, what they might say, who their friends are, how they might act. Just picture a typical like 13, 14, 15 year old sort of teenage girl. That's exactly what you get in this novel. You get an incredibly detailed and idiosyncratic look at a teenage girl, 
But other than that, it's pretty much what you imagine teenage girls to be like. And of course that's totally fine because the novel does go into great detail which makes that aspect a little easier to digest. Uh, and I suppose if I was talking about my teenage nieces, probably within the first couple of minutes of me describing what they're like would feel like the girls in this book, uh, except for the whole murdering thing. But the problem is that's not my nieces. That's not them at all. If you were to keep going, you would really get to the core of who they are, what really makes them human and different and not just a stereotype. And I couldn't escape throughout the entirety, and you spend about a hundred pages with each girl, of just feeling like no matter how much detail it went into, it was just playing at this sort of stereotype. And you would be well within your right to come back at me and say, well, you are reading a true crime novel, Andy. You know what I mean? The writing isn't going to feel or get to the core of these characters, of these girls, because it's all based on interviews, which I absolutely get. The writing style could be forcing me to disconnect in that way. The writing style, or at least like Alec, our protagonist, the journalist, could be painting these girls in a way that just feels a bit sort of cliche and stereotypical. That could be happening. And I would be fine with that if the novel itself had lots of different reveals, lots of switches, lots of changes, lots of surprises, because then it is the plot and the shifting in plot that I'm hooking on to. But because this isn't really that kind of novel, because this novel is just an exploration of these three girls and what led them to do what they did, I need to really connect to them. I need to feel like they feel real, they feel human. And unfortunately to me, I didn't get this at all. They just felt like stereotypical caricatures of teenage girls. And because of this, I did find myself feeling a little bored at times. Never enough to stop reading. I think there is a lot going on in this that does keep it ticking over. As said, the detail that it goes into, the way it talks about the occult, the way we do kind of see this sort of shift in the girls and their dynamic and their relationship, uh, those things are all handled really, really well. And those things all do kind of keep the reader invested, keep the reader turning the page. But yeah, I just... I just needed something more. And let's not forget that I am a man in my late 30s and maybe reading about the lives of three teenage girls just isn't for me, uh, even if they do turn out to be murderers. I mean, I've always believed that you can write about any subject and if it's done with passion, if it's done with rigour, if it's presented in a dynamic and interesting way and finds a way to get the reader to the core and the heart of what it's trying to explore whilst having some sort of political message and shifting my perspective on things, the subject could be about anything, something that I am not interested in whatsoever. It could be about frogs. I don't give a shit about frogs, but it could be. <laughs> and I believe that if a writer is talented enough and they know what they're doing, then I would be invested and I would care. So maybe that criticism doesn't necessarily necessarily work here but yeah it could be the fact that it, this just isn't really aimed at me but that's it for my dislikes and again I cannot stress it enough I do believe that this book is extremely successful in achieving its aims I think it has enough going on to keep you really really interested in turning the page and I think the strongest aspect of it is its exploration of location a seaside town and also the way that it's forcing us to think about true crime and society's obsession with it all of those things this book is doing really really well so, but it's just Everything else that I go to for a novel, that sort of connection to character, those interesting turns and reveals, a sort of a way to keep building, just wasn't quite there for me. So I'm ending up on like a, a 2.5 to 3 star. It was like all right and in some moments good. So have you read this novel? And if you have, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all well and enjoying whatever you might be reading. And I'll see you all on the next one.